tapas are a way of life in Madrid. To be honest, this is mostly about dipping your fresh bread into the olive oil. There is an expression that Spanish people use, vamos a tapear, or let's go for tapas. And that usually means hitting as many tapas bars as you can, enjoying cheap but flavorful bites while socializing, and chasing with local beer and vermouth. It doesn't matter what time of the day it is, actually, if you start early in Madrid, that means more variety, more culinary exploration of this vibrant cuisine, and so we start with breakfast. If you think about a typical breakfast in Madrid, you would always think about churros and chocolates, which is fine, but if you're more like a savory guy, another option could be the famous tostada, which essentially is a slice of bread with a few different toppings. And today I came to this place, which is called Anso Cafe, a place that specializes in tostadas and a team of young and energetic stuff, some beautiful vintage decor. The atmosphere is really perfect for a good tostada breakfast in Madrid. This place is located in the Malasana neighborhood of Madrid, which is a place that's crowded with university students, clubs, vintage shops. They also make good cakes and croissants. And then I've got my beautiful tostada, which has got jamon, rocket salad, as well as cheese, like goat cheese sprinkled on top. And also, actually, I think there is avocado, like the layer of, av of avocado on the bottom. Oh, it's actually divided in two. Kind of makes it a little bit easier to grab a piece. Look at that. Oh my god, that, this tostada like, is packed with ingredients. Mm. Oh my god, this is really, really good. The bread is crunchy. Tostada means essentially toasted bread. And on top of the bread, you've got a bunch of creamy stuff. The avocado, the cheese, and then you've got the saltiness given by the jamón. This is just an insane breakfast. It's pretty difficult to avoid ingredients falling from the tostada because it's really packed with stuff. Mm. Now the tostada was really good, but now we're gonna move on towards some more traditional and old style kind of tapas experience. Let's go. A legendary tapas spot in Madrid, Casa Tony is technically a casqueria, a small establishment with a local and rustic atmosphere, specializing in tapas of internal organs and entrails of animals. People come to Casa Tony to sample their famous lamb sweetbreads, which are the pancreas and the thymus of the lamb as well as pig ears. And while I wait for my molejas, I've ordered a sangria, a typical Spanish kind of punch, which combines wine, fruits and sugar. And also they've brought at the table some olives and a little bit of fresh bread. That's one of the most beautiful things of this kind of tapas bar. They just bring food to the table while you wait for your food. Fantastic. Another thing that I've ordered are the patatas bravas, cubes of deep fried potatoes with alioli sauce and, well, a brava sauce, which is the orange one. It's essentially a sauce uh, which everyone makes a little bit in a different way, but usually comprises of sauteed garlic, onions, and red peppers, and paprika. Mm. Yeah, very soft on the inside, but the crust on the outside just magic and it, they're piping hot they need to be served hot because the more you wait the more the outside crust is going to become a little bit softer mm. and the sauce the brava sauce that you can taste the paprika flavor but it's mild and it's not spicy at all and the second sauce is the alioli sauce which is you know a sauce made of essentially olive oil and garlic kind of emulsionated together I'm not very sure if this is ali oli sauce or actually garlic mayonnaise, but anyway, it's really good. Gracias. Okay, so my molejas have also arrived and they look awesome. It's a pretty sizable plate. I would say um, it's around 10 pounds if I remember correctly. They look pretty fatty because it's, well, it's a fatty part of the pork. And you're supposed to squeeze some lemon on top just to give them a little bit of acidity and tanginess. <laughs> Uh, I think you can be pretty generous with the lemon. I think it's black pepper sprinkled on the top, as well as cilantro. And the smell of freshness from this cilantro that comes from this plate is fantastic. Mm. They are amazing, like fatty, extreme umami kind of taste. Um, chewy, but yeah, the, the, the acidity, the zest given by the lemon really complements well this dish. I'm gonna try this next bite with the with the bread. 
Oh yeah, this, this, is the, this is a good bite of the lamb, sweet bread and fresh bread. Yeah, these are made to be complemented with the fresh bread. I'm always so impressed about the quality and the tastiness of fresh bread in Spain. Really most of the experience is eating this kind of tapas in this kind of authentic setting. Ah, look at the decor, look at the, the history that this place showcase. It's just a, a very beautiful and authentic environment. Next, in this tapas tour, we visit three famous marisquerias, which are local seafood tapas bars. Now, the next stop is gonna be Casa Labra. This is another gem. Look at the front of the bar, how authentic it looks, like with these brown tiles. It was funded in 86. See? Initially, the place where the Socialist Party in Madrid was born. And nowadays, it's mostly famous for their uh, croquetas de bacalao. There is a seating area outside where people from Madrid like to kind of sit down. You would think that places like this would just be stormed by tourists, but actually it's mostly local people who come here every day enjoying their beer and their bacalao. Siete twenty cinco. And I suspect the stock of croquetas might actually run out pretty fast because I think that's why people are kind of coming here early before they open. <laughs> Hola, eh, ¿te gustaría una caña? ¿Una caña? ¿Con limón? Ah. ¿Una normal? Normal. 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 Now, the best way to experience all of this is actually to sit here at the bar with the local people and enjoy the croquetas and enjoy a caña as well. So, salud. <laughs> So I'm gonna try the um, croqueta first. It's supposed to have bacalao. I think it's also got uh, potatoes inside. Let's see. Mm. Oh my god, the creaminess of this thing. If you try to squeeze it, like it will just pour out cod puree. I don't think there is actually much else inside. It's pure bacalao kind of flavor. Extremely creamy. This is actually the creamiest croqueta that I've ever had in my life. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Like, mm -hmm. This is insane. Mm. The next thing I want to try is the tallada de bacalao. So this is essentially like a strip of cod. And I think it's buttered, decently sized. Just looking at it, like kind of compete very well with the best fried Scottish fish that I've had in Scotland. Let's try this. Oh my god, this is extremely flaky. And you bite into it and the juices of the cod like comes out and this crumbly coating is just insane. Mm. Oh my god, just pure bacalao and butter. Nothing else. This is perfect as it is. Now I understand why this place is so packed with people. Like, you've seen it, like there, there are no many pieces of bacalao. These things that go extremely fast. You need to come here very early. Next, we move towards Plaza Mayor, this giant 17th century square, to visit another authentic establishment, Bar La Campana, serving the famous Bocadillo de Calamares, Madrid's famous calamari sandwich. Uh, emblematic food here at Plaza Mayor. The Bocadillo de Calamares will set you back roughly like four pounds, and it's nice to just grab it and bring it in the center of Plaza Mayor and just enjoy the scenery. The bread, the baguette, looks very fresh and very crumbly and packed with calamari. Like, I love the ratio, like, look at the ratio, like, there is this kind of very thin slice of bread on the bottom trying to hold this mountain of calamari, which is going to require a little bit of an approach. Mm. Oh my god, I need to give it a second bite, sorry. Mm-hmm. Calamari are so fresh, soft, slightly chewy as, as they should be. Yeah, this is pretty much all about the freshness and, and the simplicity of the ingredients. You could put usually some ketchup or some alioli sauce, but really like the most traditional way to eat this is like this. The baguette is the usual, 
extremely fresh and crunchy bread that you can find in Madrid. Strangely, the buildings surrounding Plaza Mayor are not government buildings, but rather apartments owned by wealthy people and spooky Disney characters. Matata! Foto que Pinocho! El único niño que no miente! Um, not very far from the Plaza Mayor, we have also got another Mariscarias which is very famous in Madrid, La Casa del Abuelo. They are particularly focused on gambas, which are essentially shrimps. So I choose to sit outside in this beautiful street full of historical buildings. It's a very central place, as I say, very close to Plaza Mayor and in some ways it's a bit touristy, but apparently you know, they make some of the best garlic shrimps in Madrid, so I think it was worth giving it a try. So my gambas al ajillo have arrived. Garlic jumbo shrimps, like they actually look like pretty sizable. Fresh uh, extra virgin olive oil, which is sizzling because they are served hot and tons and tons of garlic and I can smell the garlic coming up to my nostrils as well as parsley and they also like to put some spicy chilies in the mixture and I've also got obviously my usual vermouth which I can't really stay away from especially when I'm eating tapas in Madrid and obviously some beautiful bread baguette and what I will do I just um, sip my vermouth just to reset my test buds and Oh, nice. A couple of slices of orange inside. And I think what I'm gonna do uh, is uh, gonna grab some bread and just pick up some of these uh, shrimps and make sure that I dip it well into this kind of fresh extra virgin olive oil. Obviously it's gonna be a quite a oily dish, but it's olive oil that's full of garlic flavor. Oh my god, I'm having an overdose of garlic. The shrimps are extremely soft and they just dissolve in your mouth. These are some of the softer shrimps I've ever had. I don't know if it's because they have been kind of sizzling for a long time into the olive oil. But then it's all about this kind of garlic burst that you get into your mouth. And very slightly spicy as well. Mm, mm, yeah. To be honest, this is mostly about dipping your fresh bread into the olive oil. I'm gonna catch this kind of small chili and I'm gonna put it on top of the shrimp. I'm gonna have a spicy, a very spicy bite, I believe. Mm. Oh yeah, that's really spicy. Mm. The concussion of garlic, shrimp flavor, spiciness from this really small pim pimientos is really a match made in heaven. And once you have finished the shrimps, well, you know what to do. Get a slice of the fresh bread and just feast of the garlicky, spicy olive oil. People often mention Casa Lucio as the place in Madrid for trying huevos rotos. I actually went there, but they couldn't give me a table, unfortunately. I think these days they are too busy. They are not really a tapas bar anymore, but rather a restaurant. So I had to go elsewhere to try this dish. No, gracias. Uh, the most tasty tapas in Madrid, they are not necessarily that complicated in themselves. There was one particular tapas that I actually was looking forward to, to try and it's called huevos rotos, which literally translates as broken eggs. Essentially it's a plate of fried eggs on top of a bed of fried potatoes and usually the eggs and the potatoes are fried on the same kind of pan just to mingle the juices and the flavors together. The toppings themselves can be varied and in this case I've got lots of jamon like sprinkled on top. Now tell me this is not a beautiful looking kind of plate. I think you're supposed to make sure that the egg is broken over the chips and I'm gonna attempt in to get a bite which has got a little bit of everything here. You need some acrobatic skill to hold everything together but I've got a perfect bite here so let's try this. Mm. Yeah, it's a pretty salty kind of dish. I would say this is the perfect kind of tapas to have with some ice cold beer. More than a tapas, this was a very filling meal. But I managed to save enough space in my stomach for my next tapas bar, which I didn't want to miss. It's 3pm and the post-lunch tapas crawl is still going strong in Madrid. 
people are sipping vermouth and enjoying small authentic bites. This place is called Taberna La Concha and it's a very charming tavern that kind of specializes in tapas but also in homemade vermouth. Got some olives as well. Now compared to the other tapas bar that we have seen so far, this Taberna La Concha is a little bit more chic and as a result tapas in this place are a little bit more expensive but the presentation is absolutely beautiful you can see I've got my albondigans and salsas you can say that they are just meatballed in a red tomato sauce they usually are made with a mixture of uh, breadcrumbs a mix of pork and beef meat and then some kind of spices or condiments just garlic onion and also paprika they're supposed to be a little bit spicy I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna try and rehydrate this meatballs that's on the top with some of the tomato sauce. It's piping good and you can see here on the border of the plate there is a little bit of sprinkled paprika which I'm gonna try and collect with this meatball. And let's try this. Mm. I'm obviously used to meatballs being Italian. Kinda look like the one that my grandma made but I have to say I'm used to more like the softer kind of meatballs. These are pretty packed with meat inside. It's less of a breadcrumb kind of component and more of a uh, actual meat inside. Garlic flavor is uh, very present and I love that kind of paprika touch which adds a little bit of spice. And the tomato sauce is very naturally tasting. It's just pure tomato and hint of garlic. And that's nice because they didn't overdo it with, with spices and stuff. So it's just the tomato puree which is nice and smooth and, and just natural tasting. And it actually makes for a nice dip for your fresh bread again.